Hi, I am Sergio Boixo from the Google AI Quantum team. And today we're going to talk about an experiment we're working on, which is known as quantum supremacy. The latest experimental quantum processor produced at Google, Bristlecon, has 72 qubits or quantum bits. We're testing quantum circuits in Bristlecon with the goal of reducing errors. By their nature, quantum gates have a probability of errors, and errors can crash quantum circuits. As we calibrate quantum circuits, we bring down the probability of error. We simulate quantum circuits with traditional computers to benchmark and calibrate quantum circuits. As we work to reduce the probability of an error, simulations get exponentially harder. This means that it gets too computationally intensive even for a supercomputer to keep up. From this, we get the name quantum supremacy for this experiment. This has to do with something called the strong church turing thesis in computer science. Traditional computers from the abacus to your laptop implement equivalent operations or classical gates, although a modern computer is, of course, much, much faster. The strong church turing thesis says that all universal computers are equivalent in this way and can simulate each other efficiently. But according to quantum computing, the strong church turing thesis is false, and quantum computers can solve some problems exponentially faster than other universal computers. So what we're trying to do is kind of breaking the strong church turing thesis. You can think of a qubit as an arrow pointing to some direction on a sphere. Quantum gates are operations on qubits. Similar to classical gates, we often depict quantum gates as boxes with the input on one side and the output on the opposite side. In a quantum circuit, we apply layers of gates, one per clock cycle. A measurement at the end of the quantum circuit produces a string of bits. For the quantum supremacy experiment, we choose the quantum gates at random. This is a Hello World program for quantum computers. Crucially, in this case, we have the strongest theoretical evidence against the strong church turing thesis. It takes exponential time to simulate a random quantum circuit with a classical computer. According to quantum mechanics, every particle can also act as a wave, and this applies to qubits. The quantum state of a quantum computer contains an exponential number of waves or computational paths. This is the property that we're testing. The output state of a random quantum circuit looks like the speckles of a laser. This is a fingerprint of the quantum circuit. For some beta strings, the computational paths interfere constructively and the intensity of the output probability grows. For others, the computational paths interfere destructively and the output probability decreases. Simulating interference of the exponential number of computational paths in the quantum circuit takes exponential time. We can check if we obtain the correct fingerprint in the experiment and measure the probability of error. First, we get around a million bit strings from the quantum computer. This takes a few seconds. Then we use an expensive classical simulation to check if those bit strings have high probability. If this is the case, the error rate is low and the experiment has succeeded. The implication will be that quantum computers seem to be breaking the strong church turing thesis. As we reduce errors farther, we expect to see a similar exponential speedup for practical problem. So what's next? Visit the other videos in this series to learn more about how a quantum computer works and how to program it. You can also visit OpenFermion to learn more about how quantum computers can be used to solve problems in chemistry and material science, or check out the links included below. Thank you.